All right, I'm gonna go over the remaining examples from class today from 3.9. Remember that here are the notes on how you can estimate solving um, square roots that aren't perfect squares, okay? We left off with C and D. With C, you need to estimate the square root of 32. So think about what are the perfect squares that are the closest to 32. So 25 is the closest perfect square that's less than 32. 36 is greater than 32. The square root of 25 then is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. You, knew, you know then that the square root of 32 is in between 5 and 6. It's going to be about 5 and then something else. It needs to be a little bit more than 5 but less than 6. In order to figure what that fraction is, you need to find the difference between the two perfect squares you chose, that is your denominator, so the difference from 25 to 36 is 11. And then you need to find the difference between your number and the perfect square that is closer to zero. In this case, it would be 25. So the difference between 32 and 25, that is your numerator. Those are seven apart. So we know this would be about 5 and 7 elevenths. In order to figure out what 7 elevenths is as a decimal, you need to divide it. So do 7 divided by 11, take it out to two decimal places so that you can then round this according to the tenths. 11 does not fit in 7, but 11 does fit in 7D. It would be 6 times. 6 times 11 is 66. Subtract that, you get 4. 11 goes into 43 times. 3 times 11 is 33 remainder of seven. We're going to stop it there, although you could continue to divide, but we're just rounding to the nearest tenths, and 0.63 will allow me to do that. So this is going to be about five and six tenths when you round it. For D then, you're estimating the square root, I'm sorry, the negative square root of 75. Think about those perfect squares. The closest perfect square that's less than the square root of 75 would be 64, and greater than 75 would be 81. But this is negative square roots of 75, so it would be negative in front of both of those, which means your answer is going to fall between negative 8 and negative 9. So somewhere in between there is going to be negative square roots of 75. We know that it's got to be more than negative 8, but less, but less than negative 9. Um, so it's going to be negative 8 and something, if that makes sense. And I sh should say it differently. Really, it's going to be smaller than negative 8, but it's going to be larger than negative 9, if that makes sense. So you're going to set up your fraction. The denominator comes from the difference between these perfect squares. So how far apart are those? That is your denominator. 64 and 81 are 17 apart. Your numerator then comes from how far is 75 from the number that is closer to zero. Well, which one's closer to zero? Negative um, square roots of 64 or negative square roots of 81? The 64. So how far apart are those? Those are 11 apart. That is your numerator. To find the decimal then, we need to do this long division. So I'll set it up. 11 divided by 17. 11 fits into, I'm sorry, 17 fits into 110 six times. Six times seven is 42, carry the four. Six times one plus four is 10. When we subtract this, we get eight, drop down the zero. 17 goes into 80, well 17 is between 15 and 20, so 20 goes into 84 times. That's gonna be my guess for 17. 4 times 7 is 28, carry the 2. 4 times 1 plus 2 is 6. When we subtract, we get 12. We could keep going with the division, but this is enough to help us round. So our answer is about negative 8, 6 tenths. Circle that answer. All right, the last problem that you had to word problem. Keating needs to make a square banner for the swimming meet. The area of the banner is five square inches. Calculate the length of each side of the banner to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we would be taking the square root of 500 because 
the way we find the area of a square is we know it's side times side, and the side length would be represented by s. So the area is going to be side squared, right? Well, if we want to find the side and we know the area, we would take the square root of the area, and that should equal the side. So that's what we're going to do, the square root of 500. All right, well, the square root of 500 is not going to be a perfect square in itself, so let's estimate it. We want to find it the nearest tenth of an inch. First thing you would do is look for the perfect squares that are close. Now, I don't know these 500, you know, the those, those numbers that big very easily, so I would be thinking, what's 20 times 20, which is 400? That's close, but not very close. I would try 21 times 21, or 21 squared. I would have to do that on the side of my paper, guys, but hopefully you tried it. That would be 441. 22 squared would be 484. And 23 squared would be 529. So I can see that these two are going to be around the 500 mark. So I would say that the square root of 500 is in between the square root of 484 and the square root of 529. Those are perfect squares. I know the square root of 484 is 22 and the square root of 529 is 23, so the square root of 500 would be right in between there. So the square root of 500 would be 22 and then some fraction. We need to find that fraction. The difference between these perfect squares, how far apart are those from each other? Well, those are, ooh, I need to subtract those on the side, so I would do 529 minus 484. Forty-five apart. So that is your denominator. Your numerator would be how far is 500 from whichever is closer to zero. Well, 22 is closer to zero, so 484 would be the one that I'm finding that distance between. These two are 16 apart. Now it's time to do long division. So let's set up our long division. We would do 16 divided by 45. Add some zeros on there. 45 goes into 160. It's about 50, so I'm guessing 3. 3 times 50 is 150. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 4 plus 1 is 13. When I subtract, I get 25. Pull the 0 down. How many times does 45 fit into 250? Again, 45 is about 50, so I'm going to guess 5. We'll see if that works out. Um, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 4 plus 2 is 22. Subtract, and we get 25, so that works out. So I know it's going to be about 0.35. When I round that, that gives me that this is about 22.4 in inches, I believe, is our label. I'm going to check that. Um, the area of the banner, yep. So the side would be 22.4 inches for the side. I might even label that side. Okay, so I hope this helps you do your homework tonight. Um, if you have any questions, please email me and let you know. Let me know.